Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. And welcome back to our review of an attempted flat earth answer of Professor Dave's 10 challenge questions. Today we're going to be dealing with one of my favorite subjects and that is the lunar eclipse. So let's cue up the music and get going. Number seven, what the hell is a lunar eclipse to you? Seriously, explain anything about a lunar eclipse. The things you say about solar eclipses are stupid enough, but at least you say something. You're asking me to explain, but what are you explaining? You're just repeating what you read or what you've been told. Well, no, actually what we're doing is describing what we've witnessed since we were children. All of us have seen multiple lunar eclipses. They're actually quite common. We have at least two and as many as five every year. I saw one last January from my driveway. We understand them very well, and it's very clear as to what's going on with them. In fact, lunar eclipses were one of the first pieces of evidence that the Earth itself was a sphere because it was observed that the shadow of the Earth on the moon, which was recognized as not being part of the Earth, was always round. And the only geometric shape that will always cast a round shadow is a sphere. Well, I've seen a lot of explanations. If I had to explain it, I definitely would not use the heliocentric model because that has some problems. Well, that's kind of funny because the heliocentric model, as you call it, in other words, reality, explains the lunar eclipse perfectly. And it's able to predict it to within the minute of when they're going to occur. So I'm really interested in seeing what your excuses are going to be on this. And by the way, I should add that I find it extraordinarily humorous that you say we just repeat what we've been told. Because in reality, that's exactly what you're doing. You're going to give us the same gobbledygook that you heard on some flat earth video somewhere. And again, that's one of the reasons you don't get any credit on any of these videos. Because nothing that you put out is original. You're simply repeating something that you heard in a YouTube video instead of actually cracking a science book and learning the truth about it. The lunar eclipse, well, the shape of the shadow, um, the selenhelion is a problem for the heliocentric model. So how could I explain the selenhelion? How about explaining it for what it is? Why don't you let me show you a quick clip from a future video on lunar eclipses that talks about the selenhelion. Now, before we do that, let's go ahead and just review what a lunar eclipse actually represents. Now, two quick concepts. First of all, this yellow line is what they call the ecliptic plane. This is the plane of the orbit of the Earth around the sun. The lunar eclipse only occurs at a time that we would normally have a full moon, which means that it is on the opposite side of the Earth from where the sun would be. Now, in order for the eclipse to actually occur, the lunar orbit, which is offset, as you see, from the ecliptic by about 5 degrees, needs to be within 17 degrees of either the ascending node, which is the crossing point, or the descending node which is the second crossing point. If the sun is up here, the earth here, and the moon down in this area, we can potentially get an eclipse. If the sun is over here, the earth is here, the moon will be above the ecliptic orbit and we will see a full moon. Now, like the previous graphic, this is not to scale, but this is the mechanism by which a lunar eclipse occurs. So, we have the moon out here at one of the two nodes, the ascending or the descending node. We have the sun over here, and we have the earth in between them. Because the sun is larger than the earth, we get a two-phase shadow. We get a partial shadow called the penumbra, and we get a full shadow called the umbra. If the moon is within the earth's umbra, we see a full eclipse. If it's in the penumbra, we see a partial eclipse or a penumbral eclipse. Now, one thing that we have seen quite a bit of recently is something called refraction. This is the bending of light as it goes through the different layers of the atmosphere. And it can result in something called looming, where objects that are below the horizon 
appear to be loomed up above the horizon due to this bending of light. Now, as light bends like this, when we're observing it, we tend to make straight lines. So an object that is down here, but the light's bending up towards our eyes will appear to us to be a little bit higher in the sky. And this is how the Selene Helion eclipse occurs. Let me show you. So here we are sitting right at the terminus line on the earth, right at sunset or sunrise. The sun's out here, the moon's over here. Now, as we look out on the horizon, the moon, which is below the horizon, appears to be a little bit higher so that we can see it. Likewise, the sun is below the horizon, but because of this refraction and this bending, appears to be a little bit higher. We see the sun and the moon. However, the sun is below the rim of the earth and the moon is below the rim of the earth. And as a result, the shadow of the earth is cast upon the moon. We see that shadow as the moon is loomed up. So the bottom half of the moon here will be in partial eclipse. And here's an example of that. As you can see, it's still daytime. So the sun is above the horizon behind us. But as we look out on the moon, it's in partial eclipse right here. Pretty cool, isn't it? And again, the reason that this occurred is this is an illusion of where the moon actually is. It's really a little bit lower. Likewise, behind us, the sun is lower than it appears to us as we turn around and look at it. So this portion of the moon right here is within the shadow of the earth. Well, using the uh, explanations from a different culture and a different time, because I'm open-minded, and there, is, there are ancient texts that talk about Rahu and Ketu, and these have been observed to some extent in various photographs from high-altitude balloons. Well, fine. Where is your evidence that these bodies even exist? Do you have a radar return from one of them? Are they within the dome or outside the dome? Are they planets? Are they asteroids? Are they round? Are they disc shape? You know, some of the ancient cultures said that either a dragon or a jaguar ate part of the moon and the moon regrew. Do you have any evidence of these animals living in the sky? So quite frankly, I showed you how it occurred. And that's that. If you want to maintain that there's another body up there, fine. Be my guest. Show me evidence that it's there. So you're talking about the lunar eclipse well. Okay. Yeah, I think it could be these objects. These two objects are not perpetually above a flat plane, and you know it, which is why you're totally silent on lunar eclipses. And if you're going to propose that some other object besides the Earth is what obscures the moon, good luck trying to demonstrate its existence. Well, the demonstration of its existence is the observations we've made. You know, man, you claiming that they exist because we've seen eclipses is what we call circular reasoning. That's not the question that you have to answer. You have to answer is where's the evidence that these bodies exist? Not the fact that since there is an eclipse, they therefore must exist. That doesn't prove their existence. Show me a radar return. And by the way, this little graphic that you have in the background, a couple quick things I want to make note of. Spherical Earth, you see that? Reproduces the actual eclipse and shows how it's done. So here's your answer right here, and my only conclusion is that you know this, but you're deliberately trying to promote some sort of a silly narrative to sell some t-shirts. Not working on me, Chief. The demonstration of its existence is the observations we've made. We don't know what is occluding it, but we know it's not the Earth. You know what I really love about Flat Earth Logic? Well, we don't know what it is, we just know that it's not a spherical Earth. Well, if you don't know what it is, how do you know it's not a spherical Earth? The, the mainstream explanation for the cell and helium is refraction. Now, based on what you said earlier about refraction, I don't know if you're going to go there, but um, okay. You know, so I've said that. So that's... 
You know, which, of course, we just explained on a spherical Earth. And in many other episodes, I've demonstrated that this refraction not only occurs, but can be demonstrated. So what is your problem? And that was that. Recall that the question here was to explain the lunar eclipse on a flat Earth. What was his excuse? Well, the cell and helium can't occur on a globe. I showed you exactly how it could. I showed you the mechanism of a lunar eclipse on our current model, you know, reality. His question was to demonstrate how this can occur on a flat Earth. That's right. Your job is to take this moon and that sun and demonstrate the geometry of how something could block the light from this sun onto that moon and appear as an eclipse anywhere it is dark on the earth. You have failed miserably. You didn't even attempt to explain it. That's probably because this is not your flat earth model. You don't even know what your flat earth model is. You have no idea what's causing the darkening on the moon. You don't know what the moon is. You don't understand if the moon's light is reflected or self-generated. You think moonlight is cold. You have no clue. So, you have failed this question epically. So now we're going to go on to the next obvious question. If this sun and that moon are local objects, let's see you demonstrate that. In the meantime, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by. I look forward to our next visit. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button down there. And I look forward to having you as part of Team Bob. We've got some exciting things coming up for the channel, and I hope you'll be part of it. Take care, guys.